past, I've uncovered the secrets of what it means to be a Disney princess. Behold, Princess Pat, the first theorist princess. According to last week's episode, I have everything I need. I've got my royal theory dress, which is very highly merchandisable to the four-year-olds. I've got myself my sassy animal sidekick, and I've got a can-do attitude. Disneyland sensational parade, here I come. Not so fast, haha. Huh? I told you once and I'll tell you again, you'll never be a Disney princess! What, what do you mean, Mouse? I, I did everything you said! I call the shots around here, pal! And you'll never make it into my exclusive princess room! Wait, the random room labeled princesses in the trailer for Wreck-It Ralph 2? Yeah! Eat it! But that's so arbitrary. Why does being in a room in a completely separate movie qualify you as a princess? You'll never know because you'll never make the cut! Watch as all those dreams of being a pretty, pretty princess wither and die! And I suck on those sweet, salty tears! You're... you're insane! Insanely wealthy, you mean! Mouse, you're no mouse at all! I know what you are now! You're just a rat! Just a dirty, <laughs> dirty rat! <laughs> no! Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory, the show that continues to be a royal pain to the Disney canon by uncovering the double standards in Princess Selection. Now, if you haven't seen the first part of this series, click here to make sure that you're all caught up as we set off on a quest to determine what makes a princess truly a Disney princess. Last time, we concluded that you don't need to be heroic, chosen by fate, you don't need to be able to sing, heck, you don't even need to be a princess! In Disney's eyes, being a princess is all about what you're wearing. The dress. I anything that can be sold at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique in Disneyland. Oh, and uh, you also need an animal sidekick. And that's it! That's all there is to it! With an automatic disqualification if you might be mistaken as a prostitute. But after figuring all of that out, we still have to come back to why I started doing these episodes in the first place. To figure out whether Vanellope Von Schweetz from Wreck-It Ralph would qualify as Disney's newest princess, or at the very least, whether she deserves to be in the Disney princess room that's shown in Wreck-It Ralph 2's trailer. You see, last time we looked at what has historically qualified a character as a Disney princess, but the princess room in the trailer appears to be an updated Disney princess roster, one that's more open and more inclusive. Or not, but there's only one way to find out. So let's get ourselves into the throne room where it happened to find out for ourselves what qualifies you as a Disney princess in the world of Wreck-It Ralph 2 and whether Vanellope might be the newest addition to the Disney princess lineup. So first, who are the Disney princesses of Wreck-It Ralph 2? Well, looking at the trailers, we can identify Jasmine's Snow White, Cinderella, Pocahontas, Vanellope, Elsa and Anna, Moana, Belle, Rapunzel, Merida, Ariel, Aurora, Tiana, and Mulan. Interestingly enough, this doesn't line up with the official list of Disney princesses that we covered last time. Anna, Elsa, and Moana have all gotten upgraded for this particular movie. But even with this expanded roster, there are a few notable snubs. From Hercules' as Meg and Hunchbacks as Merelda, to Princess Alonwi from Black Cauldron and Kida from Atlantis the Lost Empire. So, just like last time, we have to deduce what separates the princess princesses inside the room from those outside the room to backdoor our way into the requirements for getting in, which will, in turn, allow us to determine if Vanellope truly meets all the criteria. Now, the fact that Mulan's in the room already eliminates the requirement of being an actual princess, i.e. the daughter of a monarch or the wife of a prince. As we covered last time, Mulan, for as cool as she is, never actually assumes princess status. Even still, it's worth mentioning that Vanellope is a princess in her own game. It is literally written into her code. So even even if this was a requirement, well, she would definitely qualify on that front. Once inside the room, the princesses toss out a few lines that are less qualifications for princess status and more tongue-in-cheek jokes at Disney's expense. Kidnapped or enslaved? No, are you guys okay? Should I call the police? Rapunzel asks if Penelope has magic hair, but obviously that shouldn't qualify someone as a princess because Rapunzel is the only person in the room with magic hair, unless you count Pocahontas' perpetual breeze blowing on her. So epic. Elsa asks about magic hands, but again, it's the same problem here. Here. Elsa's the only one with those. Funny enough, even though Vanellope answers no to a lot of these questions, she actually qualifies for a bunch of them. I mean, think about it. Does she have a magic power? Yeah. In her first movie, she has the power to glitch, a power
power that she hones throughout the film and figures out how to control at the end so she can defeat the villain and reclaim her throne. Huh, why does that sound familiar? Oh uh, yeah. Was Vanellope cursed? I mean, she says no in the trailer, but yeah. Her code was tampered with in Wreck-It Ralph so she could be removed from the throne and placed into total obscurity for a long period of time. And if that doesn't sound familiar to you, well then maybe you should re-watch Tangled or Sleeping Beauty. Already, just based on those things, Vanellope is scoring higher on the princess meter than most of the ladies in the room, which actually puts her in pretty good position to become the next addition to the Disney princess lineup. But we can't make this call based on a few random qualifications thrown out in the trailer. We need to find something that truly unites everyone we see in this room and disqualifies everyone that we don't see in the room. So the next logical thing is to look at the end of the scene. Here, Rapunzel asks if people all think that Vanellope's problems were solved by a big strong man when actually they weren't. When Vanellope says, yeah, what's up with that? It's the punchline that confirms that Vanellope really is a Disney princess after all. Now, last episode I gave the girls a hard time about this, because guess what, Ariel? Both Triton and Prince Eric are forced to clean up your little mess and save all of Atlantica. How about complaining less about other people stealing your achievements and instead stepping up and owning your mistakes? That would be a good moral lesson. Sour grapes aside, this seriously can't be the qualifier for this room. I mean, sure, the older princesses in the room were indeed rescued by dudes who went around kissing unconscious women in the forest. But what about these ladies? It's awfully hard to argue that people think that the new guard of Disney princesses need a man when their movies specifically feature them flipping this narrative on its head. One of the most central themes of Moana is that a character like Maui, literally the archetype of the big strong man, is not the linchpin in the story. This theme is even more apparent in Frozen, where Disney intentionally takes the idea of love in princess movies and flips it around by making the handsome prince the ultimate villain. Love doesn't have to be romantic love. In fact, the strongest love is with your sister. It's actually a really nice message. Real talk, no, we got super sick of Frozen there for a while because it was so overexposed everywhere, but seriously, if we all take a moment to take off our jaded glasses, it's a really good movie with some really good music, and honestly, it was really ballsy for Disney to do. So all that being said, is this room arbitrary? Is it just Disney giving up and randomly including some new popular princesses to keep everyone from complaining? Ha! Of course not. This is Disney we're talking about. They are way too smart for that. No, the Disney princess room in Wreck-It Ralph 2 doesn't come down to looks or animal friends or not need no man. Nope, it's not about who they are, it's about what they earn. The qualification for Disney princesses in this room comes down to how much bank they can roll in for Disney. If you don't believe me, check out the stats. Websites like Box Office Mojo keep track of gross profits from movies going all the way back to the earliest classics like Gone with the Wind and Snow white, and even accounts for ticket price inflation. Now, this lets us compare how deep the royal coffers go for each of the Disney princesses that we see here, and it tells us a pretty clear story about what makes Disney treat a woman like royalty versus giving them the royal boot out of the Magic Kingdom. Looking at all the global gross adjusted profits for Disney princess movies, there are no surprises at the top of the list, with Frozen being the first modern Disney princess movie to gross over one billion dollars globally with a single release. That one billion dollars apparently buys you two seats in the Disney princess room. The rest of the princesses score between $673 million globally with Sleeping Beauty, down all the way to the low end of Princess and the Frog with $267 million globally, and $104 million specifically in the US. And wouldn't you know it, but that seems to be our cutoff. Anything that falls below the $250 million range for worldwide gross profits, or under $100 million in US profits, no longer makes the cutoff for entry into this room. It's the one thing that reliably separates the snubs from this room. Hercules, it only made $99 million in the US, so afraid Meg isn't getting past the bouncer. Hunchback, also in the low $100 million range domestically, and again, Esmeralda, kinda treated like a prostitute. Black Cauldron and Atlantis, both Disney movies featuring empowered female princesses, fall even further below the cutoff, so nope, they don't stand a chance. Remember, the Disney Princess Merchandise brand makes over $1.5 billion dollars every single year. So if these gals can't push ticket sales to their movies, then you know they're not worthy to sip lattes with the rest of the gals, and you know, sell dresses, tiaras, and dolls off the shelves. As an aside, I gotta point this out. Each princess wearing her signature pajamas at that slumber party is obviously the most blatant commercial for Disney apparel that I have ever seen. But then again, we on the internet apparently don't care. By the way, Theorist merch is still on sale. Go get yourself a t-shirt. They're great. They're comfortable. You're gonna look amazing. So there you have it. You women of Disney are only worth what you're able to earn. That's 
gotta be worse than the messaging last episode. I mean, think about it. Disney is clearly pandering to your strong female pride in this trailer. But for all the woo girl power that's present here, they're not practicing what they preach. The girls in this room aren't here because of their heroism, they're here because of money, Disney's bottom line. If inclusion in the princess room was truly about strong women who don't need no man, well then, you would see less financially viable characters here. But they're not. They are kept outside of Disney's huge shiny blockbusters, swept under the rug alongside Dumbo's Jim Crow's so that you'll forget about them, Disney's failures, and move on and buy yet another shiny princess stress. But with that said, now that we've found the crucial differentiator, basically that all our princesses are major one percenters for Disney, we can finally decide if Vanellope belongs in the room or not. Based on the gross adjusted global profits for the first Wreck-It Ralph movie, it earned $471.2 million, which definitely qualifies Vanellope for the rich princess club. In the US alone, it raked in almost $190 million, beating out other princesses in the room like Mulan and Tiana, and thereby securing Vanellope a spot at the slumber party. She'll even represent a new category of princess, the geek princess. Actually, no, because Princess Leia would also qualify for the room, and she would probably be the geek princess. Maybe the star princess? Oh, she has no animal sidekick. Leia would be in this room, but as an official Disney princess, based on the qualifications last time, she wouldn't be. Anyway, Vanellope, at the very least, would be like the gamer princess. So, there you have it. Based on the qualifications required to get into the princess room, Vanellope does indeed qualify as a Disney princess. And as long as Wreck-It Ralph 2 performs at the box office, she shouldn't get the boot, right? Well had it been a month ago, I would have said yes. However, there might be one more wrinkle to this that puts Vanellope's place in the Princess Hall of Fame in jeopardy. It has to do with Disney's latest actions, not towards their princesses, but towards their employees. You see, in a recent controversy, Disney chose to fire the director of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, James Gunn, over a series of vulgar and inappropriate tweets that he made between 2009 and 2011. And having read those tweets, let me make it clear, they're really bad, especially as they relate to women and kids, which, if you're Disney, you're gonna be kinda sensitive about. I'm not gonna put them here out of fear of the kids who watch a video about Wreck-It Ralph and Disney princesses, but I am gonna put the link in the description so that you can read them and judge for yourselves, which you should do in any sort of circumstance like this. Read the information for yourself and make your own call. A lot of stuff gets mixed up with misinformation. Anyway, even though James Gunn deleted the tweets and apologized for him multiple times in the intervening years, Disney stated that, quote, the offensive attitudes and statements discovered on James's Twitter feed are indefensible and inconsistent with our studio's values, and we have severed our business relationship with him." End quote. If this is Disney's policy with its employees, though, they're gonna start running into some issues with other employees. In this case, old Vanellope Von Schweetz, voiced by Sarah Silverman. You see, just like Gunn, and quite honestly like a lot of comedians, Sarah's early work really doubled down on edgy, envelope-pushing humor, taking controversial, taboo topics and diving headfirst into them. For example, her show on Comedy Central, The Sarah Silverman program had full episodes dedicated to jokes like blackface and sexual deviance. She's used racial slurs before on late night programs and has actively said that she wanted to be the first person to make jokes at the expense of Martin Luther King Jr. All things that seem fairly comparable to what Gunn did on his Twitter feed. And just like Gunn, Sarah Silverman has apologized and made it clear that she's embarrassed by a lot of those early jokes of hers. Now, I'm not casting judgment here. I report facts and from those concoct theories. I have no problem problems with Sarah, and I think that she's done a lot of good for a lot of really positive causes. And I firmly believe that humor, acceptable taste, and most importantly, people change over time. But with the James Gunn situation, Disney has set itself a precedent. It's there, currently being hotly debated in social media. None of us have a copy of Disney's Code of Conduct in front of them, but if Vanellope is truly contributing to the Disney Princess Powerhouse, we all might want to be prepared for a little change of voice acting, just in case. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And... Do you think Wreck-It Ralph breaks the internet? That is nothing compared to Wreck-It Ralphs of the real world. People who actually want to break into stuff on the internet, including people's accounts, phones, and computers. King Candy, the hacker of the original Wreck-It Ralph, is creepy enough. You can bet that real internet hackers aren't nearly gonna be as sweet. So what do you do to stop them? Well, you use a VPN, like I do, and like a 
lot of my other fellow YouTubers do. And the one that I found the best results with is our sponsor for today, NordVPN. You could say that it protects the royal treasury of my film theory scripts. Now, if you've never used a VPN before, Nord is a great place to start because it's easy to use and you can install it across all your different devices. Whether it's the phone that you play Fix It Felix on, the tablet you write your Disney fan fiction on, or the desktop where you complain in the comments that my theories are bogus on. Hashtag get MatPat off the internet. No matter what you're doing, you'll be doing it safely through Nord, which filters all the data coming in and out of your computer on the internet, making it a lot harder for someone to hack you or for other malicious stuff to happen to your devices. I mean, seriously, it's a lot of peace of mind because it's basically like your own personal internet filter. On a more serious note, as someone who just became a dad and has a baby monitor running on my Wi-Fi, you can bet that internet security has a whole new meaning for me now. But regardless of whatever information you're looking to protect, the websites you're visiting, your personal account information, whatever your reason for wanting to be safer and more protected online, check out NordVPN with the link in the description. Click it down there or head to nordvpn.com slash film theory, N-O-R-D vpn.com slash F-I-L-M-T-H-E-O-R-Y, where they're giving away a huge discount off their subscriptions with our code. Seriously, it is huge. It is 77% off, which is kind of a random number, but it's still a massive random number. It's like almost giving it away for free. So go there now because it's ending soon. Stay out of King Candy's clutches. Nord VPN, 77% off. That's one seven away from jackpots. Although this is already a jackpot deal.